Hi Aquarius, welcome to your September 2023 astrology horoscope forecast. Welcome to my channel. I've been taking a little break and it feels good to be back Aquarians. September is a month of uh, catching a breath. It's a month of taking a pause. It's a month of centering ourselves, aligning ourselves to what is it that we want out of our life for the next six months. For the last three months, we've had quite a few planets that have been uh, retrograde and uh, it could have been fairly chaotic for you. Uh, Aquarians, uh, communication may have gone awry. Um, it may also have been that, you know, you've been very confused about taking certain decisions and that's simply because there was no clarity or there was no transparency and you really didn't know which way to go. Before I dive into the planets that are going direct uh, this month, I would also like to mention that we have a season of eclipses beginning in October and uh, that's uh, maybe the reason why we are being given a, a breather in September, no free lunches anywhere. And um, we have Mercury which is retrograde in Virgo, uh, I've done an entire video on it, I'm going to be linking it up up over here for you it will be worth your while uh, to have a look at it it will give you a better context it will give you an understanding exactly as to what is it that's really going on now um, and i'm recording this as mercury retrograde begins so let's see how this goes now mercury is uh, retrograde in your house of joint finances resources sexuality intimacy legal paperwork and uh, it also speaks about your partner's income. So a Mercury retrograde for you in a lot of ways is going to be like a game changer for you. It's like a, um, it's like a cosmic flashlight. It's going to be shining a light on all the nooks and crannies of your personal life and you know areas which maybe you've not wanted to talk about and things which you have sort of just kept them hidden under the ca uh, carpet and now they just start, you know, uh, surfacing and you're forced to deal with them. This retrograde is going to nudge you to embrace your vulnerability and express yourself more openly, especially when it comes to those aspects which you do not want to talk about in your uh, personal uh, connections. It's about harmonizing. Um, harmonizing that is required in your closest relationship. So um, it's a uh, you know, there are these hidden parts in your life where you would sort of let them be. You don't want to disturb them. You don't want to talk about them. But uh, right now, it's more like a wake-up call because everything seems to be merging uh, for you. So it's a good time to be doing a mental audit. And I think if you have not uh, explored therapy, it's a fabulous time to be getting some therapy. Uh, if you do not want to get therapy, it's a uh, good time to be journaling as well. And uh, also, um, you know, just do like a pro and a con and audit exercise of your most, your intimate, your personal relationship. Um, like, a, you know, what works, what does not work. And this is also a time that you need to be asking yourself that what is it that is keeping you um, that is holding you back from having deeper connections. What is it that is missing in your relationship? Is there something that you are uh, sort of refusing to acknowledge, you're refusing to give? Um, is there, because a lot of times, you know, when things get slightly um, difficult in, in, in personal relationships, we tend to get more focused on what is it that we are not getting? What is it that the other person is not giving us? But uh, with the retrograde in Virgo, it's a good time to be doing that um, self audit as well without being too critical and saying that, you know, uh, I'm the worst or I'm the one who's made mistakes or going to the other extreme and saying, you know, they can nothing be wrong with me. But try and do like a good self audit of what is it that, you know, you feel you're not being given. Is it something that you are giving? Uh, is it something that, uh, you know, uh, what is it that is keeping you away from having a deeper connection uh, or a nurturing connection in your most intimate relationship? 
um, there could be some in some very rare cases this speaks about divorce this speaks about uh, alimony it speaks about who gets what it speaks about power struggles it speaks about uh, uh, you know how your uh, or rather you or your partner are trying to sort of manipulate the other it could be emotional manipulation as well good time to be taking a look at your finances good time to be getting another opinion uh, on how to manage your finances uh, good time to be looking at assets that have not been yielding any returns and good time to be uh, diluting them uh, as well on the fourth we have venus that is going into your um, uh, that is going direct in your house of marriage and it is uh, also your house of business partnership so it's a fabulous time i think it's literally like a cosmic window occurrence if you want to put things right if you want to sort things over and yet i must uh, remind you that we have mercury which stays retrograde till the 15th of september so no signing of documents no taking big hasty decisions not rushing out and buying something really expensive uh, try and um, evaluate, try and do your research, try and open up conversations and Venus Direct uh, beginning of the month is going to be making the other person more conducive because this has to do with your, uh, uh, your marriage and it has to do with your uh, work partnerships. It's a fabulous time that um, you know um, you can improve your relationship especially with your partner and also it can you know this uh, this transit can bring about a balance to your uh, ego and it can allow you hence to deal with other people in a more harmonious way you know it's not all about i and how is it that i'm being impacted and i'm being affected by it and um, your ability to uh, deal with your partner with warmth with genuineness will be quite effortless now so if there have been some uh, difficult conversations that you've been wanting to have or you have had and you know you want to sort of pick them up now it's a good time to be um, it's, it's, it's a good time to be sort of picking them up again and ensuring that they get done very gently and uh, softly also, also this transit also encourages mending of any recent disputes or disagreements that you may have had with others uh, it's a time of reconciliation or, you know whether it is uh, with your partner whether it is your work uh, it's a good time to be approaching those conversations again with a lot of compassion in any case Venus is going to be making things quite conducive so it will be quite easier for you to um, even heal rifts, you know, where they are there. Um, it's a, what you need to be reflecting on during the Venus transit is how can I continue to nurture and strengthen my relationship with my partner? Are there are any unresolved conflicts that need to get healed? Um, how can I better express my um, uh, my emotions to other in a way that is both clear and sincere? So Venus um, transit in this house uh, it signifies a time for you know where you can cultivate love and harmony and you can create if it has been lacking. If you've been trying to put things right, then this is a good time to be mending those things as well. On the 15th, we have a new moon that is there in your house of joint finances, resources, sexuality, a lot of focus this month on the uh, power struggle. And on the 16th, we have uh, Mercury that goes uh, direct um, in the same house. I just need to have some tea. So, the new moon over here uh, is going to be bringing about an opportunity again this is the house of joint finances maybe something new crops up maybe uh, there is a maybe your partner is getting a, a new project a new um, it could even mean in certain cases uh, uh, you know he's either getting an inheritance or he's getting some bonus or something to do with money that sort of comes his way and uh, also this is a time where literally a new lease of life gets put into your uh, interpersonal connection and even at work you will find that you know that it's um, it's easier to deal with your co-workers now during this time 
However, very importantly, since the new moon is there in your joint finances and resources, uh, it can be that, um, you know, that you are now looking at, maybe you are exploring uh, ways in which you feel that harmony can be uh, had in a, you know, even if it's a very hostile relationship. On the 23rd, we have Sun, which is joining Mars in your house of, uh, uh, this is the house of Jupiter. It speaks about uh, long distance travel and it speaks about deepening your uh, spirituality. It speaks about expanding your mind. And uh, Sun over here is going to be giving you the courage to, uh, you know, to really broaden your mind. So whether it speaks about, uh, some of you may just think about taking a solo trip. Some of you may think about upskilling yourself, irrespective of how old you are. You may think about, you know, uh, it's a fabulous time to be learning. So if you want to do a course, if you want to, in fact, even some of you could be traveling for those of you who are in, uh, you know, are looking at colleges, this could be the time that you're traveling out of the country and you're uh, traveling for studies. Uh, but overall, it speaks about uh, deepening your spirituality, connecting with your higher self. Um, you may be finding uh, answers uh, or maybe those answers may be coming to you through uh, spirituality. Good time to be made, uh, fabulous time to be traveling as well. We close the month on the 29th with a full moon that is there uh, in your house of communication. This is the house of siblings and uh, the community where you stay at large. Some amount of short distance travel as well. So full moons normally tend to be really emotional because something is coming to an end. It's reaching its fruition but we also have better clarity. Maybe uh, they have been things that you have said because this is again or maybe not said. Um, since this is a house of Mercury and Mercury is retrograde till about 15th of, uh, uh, of September, maybe you may have to take certain things back. Maybe you have made certain promises. Maybe you have said, you know, that you will do certain things. But now uh, you realize with this full moon that uh, maybe you, you know, you can't deliver, you can't do those things. Also, full moons at time... Uh, uh, you know, give us a lot of clarity on what we want and what we don't want um, and even what we should say or should have said or uh, shouldn't have. So uh, this is going to be bringing, I think it's going to take you back on a lot of conversations. Maybe they may have been some red flags, maybe things that you should have questioned then or you may, you should have asked for clarity or maybe you should have stood up for yourself. All of that comes to sort of light with the full moon. But this is also about like, uh, you know, something finishing. So maybe with the retrograde and with the full moon, all of this is sort of, you know, you're looking back. You're looking back and you're sort of revising it in your head. You're going through it. It's not that, you know, you're going to be taking an action. But also the chapter or the communication is sort of, it's, it's finished, it's done. Uh, this also speaks about uh, a sibling or the community at large. So it would be worth your while to be, uh, you know, getting involved in your neighborhood. It would be worth your while that, you know, you get uh, either you volunteered. It's a fabulous, fabulous time uh, wherein pets will be a source of great comfort. In any case, I think pets are always a great source of, uh, of uh, comfort. But good time to be volunteering at a animal shelter great time to be uh, if you've been thinking about adopting a pet a fabulous time to be doing so and um, uh, overall uh, pets will be a great source of joy and comfort for you it's been a pleasure speaking with your aquarians i'll see you again soon and thank you so much for watching